and thanks for joining our worship today. The peace of Christ be with you. Today is very important. Uh, the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in Canada will begin with worship at 2 p.m. today. So please remember the General Assembly, all the commissioners and all the meetings and decisions made at those meetings. As you know, our denomination is going through a very difficult time and this General Assembly will be very important. After the service today, there will be uh, Zoom, Holy Communion, Live Communion at 11 o'clock. So please join us. Okay. Please join me now in the call to worship. We give you thanks, O Lord, with our whole heart. We give thanks for your steadfast love and faithfulness. O God, we call on you, for you will increase our strength of soul. Though we walk in the midst of troubling times, you will stretch out your hand to us. So we gather to worship God, trusting in God's goodness and guidance. We come to offer our prayers and praise, seeking God's renewing love day by day. Let us pray. God of creation and compassion, we praise you for your attention to each and every blessed creature, marveling at the detail and the grandeur you call into being. You tend the fragile beauty and balance in the world, receiving fra uh, praise from the depths of the sea to the tops of the mountains. You have seen your church grow from tiny beginnings to a worldwide community of those who follow Jesus, full of diversity in voice and vocation. Receive our praise as we witness your patience and perseverance with all you have made. Open our eyes to the purposes you have for us, for our congregation and for our denomination. Awaken us with the inside of your spirit and reveal to us how best to serve you in the world you love. 
For we offer ourselves to you in the name of Christ our Lord. God of purpose and possibility, you give us work to do and the skills we need to accomplish your calling. Yet we prefer to follow our own ways. We resist your wisdom and fail to consider the suggestions of others. We think we know better. Forgive our stubborn nature and our unwillingness to reconsider our own views. By the power of your Holy Spirit and the grace of Christ our Lord, give us teachable spirit to learn new ways to serve you and live as good neighbors in church and community. We pray all this in Jesus' name, and we pray as he taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The prophet Micah reminds us that God requires three things of us. To do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. To all who turn away from self-interest and seek reconciliation with God and neighbor in kindness and humility. God offers forgiveness and peace. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Good morning, children. So how are you this morning? And I brought a tree branch with me this morning. Guess where it came from? After a big windstorm, you might find a lot of branches scattered around on the ground. So have any of you seen the mess that strong wind can make of leaves and branches? If the wind is strong enough, it can break a big branch right off the tree, or even blow a whole tree over. You know, from a tree's point of view, it might be better if there were no wind at all. Even ordinary wind can make things difficult for trees. The wind blows trees around and bends their branches this, this way, and that and sometimes breaks their branches. Well, some years ago, scientists tried out an experiment with trees and wind. They built a huge and clear dome to enclose an area where animals and trees and other plants lived. So light could come in, but the space was closed off from the rest of the world in every other way. So no air could enter from the outside, so there was no wind inside the dome. At first, the trees did very well. With no wind to bend or break their branches, the trees grew straight and tall. And after a while, some of the trees produced fruit. But as the fruit grew larger and heavier, the branches that held the fruit began to break. The trees were not strong enough to support their own fruit. The scientists discovered that trees need wind to build strong branches. So as wind pulls the tree and branches this way and that, they grow strong and flexible. Trees actually need the bothersome wind in order to grow stronger and strong and stronger. So people are a little bit like trees. We may not like it when bad things or troubles come our way. 
we may feel hurt if others tease us for believing in God and for always wanting to do things God's way. We may be pushed around by problems or by difficult people, but we don't have to be afraid. Those troubles can end up making us stronger if we keep trusting the Lord. In the New Testament book of Romans, we learn that we can rejoice when we run into troubles because they will make us strong inside. God will be with us in any and every trouble we face. And when we see how God helps us make it through one problem, we know God will be there for the next one too. And the one after that. So, and the more we see how God helps us, the more we trust in God. Let us pray. Dear God, stay with us in every trouble and every bad thing we face. Show us how strong we can be when you are with us. Amen. Good morning. Our first lesson this morning is taken from Psalm 133. Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Our second reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. 2 Corinthians 6, 1 to 13. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, In the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful and yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing, yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and opened wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As a fair exchange, I speak to you as my children. Open wide your hearts also. Mark 4, 35 to 41. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with them. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, 
be still. Then the wind died down and it was perfectly calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of the Lord. This is a story from Max Lucado in his book, In the Eye of the Storm. It's a story about Chippy the parakeet. Chippy was a happy little bird, content every day to sit on his perch, swinging and singing to his little heart's content. One day, Chippy's owner took the initiative to clean out his cage. She took off the attachment from the end of the vacuum hose and stuck it in the cage to remove the sediment from the bottom. Just then the phone rang. She turned to pick it up and had barely said hello when Chippy got sucked in. As you can imagine, the bird owner gasped, dropped the phone, turned off the vacuum, and ripped open the bag. Inside, there lay Chippy, still alive, but stunned by the trauma. The bird was covered with all the terrible grit and grime that fills vacuum bags, so the owner did the only thing she could think to do. She grabbed him up, raced to the bathroom, turned on the faucet, and held Chippy under running water. Then realizing poor little Chippy was soaked and shivering, she did what any good bird owner would do. She reached for the hairdryer and blasted the little guy with hot air. Poor Chippy never knew what hit him. A couple of days after the experience, the reporter who first wrote about the event talked to Chippy's owner. He asked how the bird was doing. She said, well, Chippy doesn't sing much anymore. He just sits and stares. It's no wonder. One minute the little guy was swinging and singing, and before he knew it, he was sucked in, washed up, and blown over. If that doesn't turn your song into a blank stare, nothing will. My guess is most of us can relate to Chippy. There are times when life treats us more harshly than we expect. It might be something as small as cutting remark from someone we consider a friend, or it could be something as major as the death of a spouse. It might be hearing the word malignant from the lips of a doctor, or it could be the collapse of a business that you invested your life in. It's possible to get battered, bruised, and blown away by rough times and difficult circumstances. When those things happen, often the best we can muster is a blank stare, and our song sometimes seems like a distant memory. We just heard another story in the Bible. One day, Jesus and his disciples were crossing the Sea of Galilee when a furious storm came up on the lake. The waves swept over the boat, threatening the lives of everyone on board. The disciples panicked with fear, but Jesus kept on sleeping. The disciples woke Jesus and cried, Lord, save us, we are going to drown. Jesus replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? After Jesus rebuked the wind and waves, the men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. First, storms are normal, and they don't last forever. So here they are out in the boat, out on the lake, 
and this terrible storm comes up. The waves are crashing into the boat and they are fearful for their lives. Yet, storms out on the lake are common occurrences. Sure, this one is bad, but so too have been the others. Another good thing about storms is that they don't last forever. Nature's periodic disturbances of the atmosphere come and go. Storms develop, reach a climax, and then dissolve. They don't last forever. Just as storms are part of weather, unnatural to the created order, so too. The storms we personally experience are a part of life. I have had plenty of stormy periods in my life. I didn't ask for them, but they came upon me. But what I have found is that during the stormy periods, life is more intense. It's there in your face. And I have felt more alive during those times. Even during moments of immense pain and struggle, still I feel more alive than during moments of relative peace and calm. Sometimes it is through the heaviness, the weight, the burden of life that we become aware of its value, of its meaning that we come to live with intensity. If life was always calm, it would be that boring. And yes, I know there are others whose battle in end for life has been exhausting. They long for a period of peace and calm. That peace will come. Second, don't worry. Jesus is in your boat. I want you to see this important truth here today. Jesus was in the boat with the disciples. Hear me this morning. When Jesus is Jesus in your boat, it doesn't matter what comes your way. I want you to see for the disciples in the lake during a storm. There is no better place for them at this moment than where they are. Not because they are in a storm, not because it is a terrible storm, not because their lives are at stake, but because of who is in the boat. It is interesting that Jesus isn't worried about the storm. He brings it to an end for the sake of the disciples. He brings it to a dead calm. I wonder, therefore, if the point of the story is not to suggest that Jesus can bring the storm to an end, which he certainly could, but that in the midst of the storm, we are safe. The same is true for us. This is what Jesus knew. Fast asleep in the boat, his father was there for him the whole time, looking out for him. God is keeping faith with Jesus, and Jesus knows it. So even when it didn't look like it, he was safe. We are being cared for by the same God. John Wesley was once on the ship. Then there was a big storm on the sea. During the storm, the Moravians had a peace and were singing to God. They were totally committed to God and therefore they knew their lives were in God's hands. John Wesley desired to have that same peace. This led to his salvation. If we are living in defeat, stress, with worry, with the cares of this world, then we are living beneath the means with which 
we have been empowered. I'm here today to tell you, don't worry. Jesus is in your boat. Jesus has empowered you. And if Jesus can sleep during your storm, then certainly you can have peace. So, the next time your situation makes you feel as if you've been sucked in, washed up, and blown over, don't be afraid. If you have a relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ, His Son, and if the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, then keep hanging on. Let the power of God carry you through the trial you face. In addition, thank God that He loves you enough to use this difficult circumstance to help you face the future He has in store for you. Jesus is in our boat and God take care of us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us pray. God of grace and goodness, we offer our gifts in gratitude for all we receive from you in Christ and in creation. We trust you can multiply them in ways we cannot even imagine. Bless the ministries of our congregation and of the Presbyterian Church in Canada in these challenging times. Surprise us by what you accomplish through us as we sow seeds of generosity in the gifts we bring to you. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us today and join us for Zoom Holy Communion after the service. I close our worship in benediction. So let us pray. We depart this place as those sent by God to bring healing and hope to a hurting world. Instead of a world of doubt, let us offer words of hope. Instead of the words of derision, the words of praise. Instead of the words of animosity, the words of love. Let us go in the name and in the power of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to be the church. Amen.